This is Somewhere in the Skies with Ryan Sprague. What's up, guys? Ryan Sprague here from Somewhere in the Skies, and welcome to this very special uh, early morning edition for our uh, PST folks over on the West Coast, including one of our guests, two of our guests, possibly, today. Um, welcome. Live stream. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought, what the heck? I mean, I've been covering historical UFO cases from around the world this past month, everything from Africa, uh, Russia, few other countries, regions, and um, haven't been really talking about the recent stuff going on in the UFO world lately. So I thought, who better than our friends over at the Unidentified Celebrity Review? We're going to have Luis Jimenez and Jazz Shaw on the show to talk all about all the latest UAP stuff with Gillibrand amendments and uh, National Cathedral events and some Really interesting breaking news from John Greenwald over at the Black Vault. He might be joining us. We're not positive yet. Um, he he has kids. He's got a lot to do before school starts. So we'll see. We'll see if he makes it. Um, if not, uh, I have these two lovely gentlemen with me today to uh, chat about some of the stuff John has been putting out over at the Black Vault as well. But without further ado, I'm going to bring in my two guests for today, Luis Jimenez. And Jazz Shaw. What is up, gentlemen? Ryan? <laughs> Mr. Sprague? <laughs> you both did the same exact salute. I love it. I only because I knew he was going to do that. So I, <laughs> hey, went, man. I, I stole Jazz. You can take the boy out of the Navy. You can't take the Navy out of the boy. There Apparently, Jazz. <laughs> Lou, I, Lou, your mic might be off. I'm not sure. Oh. Or you're doing a really cool Hello? echo effect. Hello? How's that? Oh, there you are. Is that better? That's okay, perfect. sorry. Yeah, it was just a little far away. Thank you no, for... I uh... feel like that's... That's your um your sort of thing now, right? Is everyone is always like, oh, your mic's off, your mic's off. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, uh, it's usually a muting problem with with uh, with the shows where they accidentally. Uh, oh yeah, uh, everyone's know, too to polite. Start with a muted mic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The old uh, Zetterstrom, as they call it. No, for sure. I almost fell off my chair, guys. Welcome to live to the live stream. Um, man, a little too early to be drinking, Sprague. Uh, right, right, yeah, especially for you. I gotta thank you, man. I know it's uh, <laughs> that's only 10 a.m. I've been there. up for four hours. Oh, fair enough. I wasn't yeah. sure if you were an early riser or not, but uh, usually pretty early, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Well, let's say hello to some of our friends here in the chat before we really get going, guys. Um, I don't want to keep you all day and night. Um, we got CJ awaiting aliens, dope nose Matthew Riot, as always. Benji, JC, um, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm excited because, like I mentioned earlier, um, you guys have been killing it over there, covering everything that's been going on um, in the UFO world as of late. And, of course, I mean, a fi you guys are live five days a week between you and Singularity and, um, and Daniel's show as well. So um, tell me, before we really get into the meat of everything, uh, what have you guys been covering over at UCR and, um, yeah, give us a little, uh, a little tease, I guess, of what has happened this past week with you guys and maybe what's to come. I mean, we've been really focused and, and thanks to jazz and the work that he's doing and Brian Bender and, and all of these wonderful political analysts that really know the ins and outs of how an amendment works and where it goes and who has to pass it and who votes on it and all the, the nuances of, how Washington works, um, you know, so jazz is really the people like we've been leaning on him a lot, but that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the Gillibrand amendment pretty much since it, it's been on the radar. Um, and, you know, of course they, we've had, uh, you know, John Greenwald, of course, is always putting out cool stuff. Um, honestly, we haven't even had a chance to cover it. So I'm glad we're here to talk about it today because I'd like to get your guys view on it uh, because I'm still catching up uh, just because there's been so much. We've been so focused on this on this amendment and, and making sure that uh, people are getting off their tails and going and making some phone calls and tweeting right. their senators and congressmen or writing an email or letter. 
Um, you know, so that's that's been the focus of the show. Um, and then in between that, you know, we just we have our guests um, that that, you know, bring in the topics that they're familiar with and they want to talk about. And, and, dino and beavers. you know, yeah. dino beavers and <laughs> a lot of <laughs> dino beavers the last month. Um, you know, we've 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 been uh, doing the KGRA show now. So that's been a lot of fun and, and lining those shows up and talking to some people. I mean, you sent me with Peter Robbins. Holy cow. What a beautiful man. Uh, he's going to yeah. be on the show this week with, with Avi Loeb. So it's going to be him and Avi Loeb on Friday. Oh, wow. um, and the discussion I had with Peter for two hours was just so awesome, man. I cannot thank you enough for contacting me with him. Uh, we got to talk to, you know, Lee Spiegel, which has been a big, big hero of mine. And, and mm -hmm. jazz had a little, man crush on lee uh while we did the show which was fun um who doesn't who doesn't i mean he's so cool um and yeah you know just 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 having fun man having the conversations uh you know i think this is something that can be talked about every day and and i think it's it's becoming easier and easier as the time goes by so yeah man it's awesome. it's been a lot of fun Awesome. Yeah. And we've got prime time here. Matthew Riot, as always. Andrew, hello, guys. Um, yeah, I caught the uh the Lee Spiegel episode. Man, you guys covered so much in such <laughs> Man, a short amount of time. Honestly, I, know I could have done two do. hours just on one aspect. Just the just the UN trip and all of the that show flew by. It flew so by. It was so like, fast. I, was I will like, tell oh, you this. I was more um, things to talk about. Oh, we're done. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to it on my way to work. So, you know, here in New York, that's what podcasts are for our commutes, as I'm sure, right. Lou, for you on the freeways in LA. Like, mm -hmm. you need something to do, jazz too, um, on these commutes or, or whatnot. And um, I was on my way to work. I was working on 45th Street in Manhattan. And I was so like, enthralled in the conversation i ended up on like 50th street five blocks away from my job i was 20 minutes late and it was because i was <laughs> listening to your damn show so you almost got me fired guys you almost got me fired. well that's that's shout out to artemis I, I see uh you guys yep. are in the chat um when we get done with this today about two hours from now stop by artemis's show i'm apparently going to be on there too i i agree to <laughs> right way on. too much stuff i really you are issue. You're a celebrity, right. man. That's what happens. That's what Lou, Lou makes you. Lou makes people. That's oh, his job. stop it, right? I don't make anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. make anybody. Jazz has been doing this a lot longer than all of us. He's combined. been in the game a, a while. You know, Absolutely. Not to call him old, but he's uh, he's our oh, you can. he's our resident he's our resident <laughs> curmudgeon, and we love him. He's amazing, Jazz. Well, I mean, let's let's start there, man. We're gonna wait a little bit because uh, John might be hopping in. We'll wait and see. If not, we will cover all his latest. But let's start with um, Jazz. What you've been up to lately, man? You put out this huge piece recently, all about um, you know, mostly what we'll be talking about today. HR four three fifty, um, this amendment by Gillibrand, and uh, man, if this isn't like explosive news right now i i don't know what is we're living I, I like literally right now it's literally the biggest news since lou elizondo came out of the closet you know i mean it i i really can't think of a bigger story beyond like the new york times thing and the videos dropping and revealing a tip that was certainly gigantic but since then there's been a lot of stuff but this is the biggest development for anybody who re who's really interested in my opinion in ending UAP secrecy and government transparency and, and things like that. And uh, yeah, the, the the one that came out of the House uh, from Congressman uh, Galeos was OK. I was a little disappointed in it and mm -hmm. there was nothing in the original Senate bill. And then all of a sudden Gillibrand just drops this atomic bomb in the room. And by the time I got to, got done reading it, I was like, it, am I awake? You know, <laughs> because because that's amazing. So, yeah, it uh, the, the bill passed uh, cloture last night around eight o'clock, uh, which means that it's cleared to move forward. Um, the Senate version of the bill, which is the one that I'm going to speak for everybody, although, although I shouldn't. It's the one we like a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of hundreds of amendments that are currently on the table. Um, in the next steps in the process and uh dean johnson had really good thread on twitter this morning if you missed it going through yeah. and 
explaining a lot of the details, but um, there's a number of those amendments that are never going to see the light of day. They're just going to stay on the table and the bill will move on without them. Uh, there's going to be some number of them that there's a joint consensus on that they'll put together one or more blocks of amendments because they all have a number assigned as soon as they're entered and they'll read down the list of the numbers of the amendments and there'll be a voice vote. And those are the ones they already know they're going to pass. I am crossing my fingers and toes. I really hope the Gillibrand Amendment is one of those. There may be one or two contentious amendments that will have to have their own separate debate and vote. And But even if that happens, if that's where Gillibrand's amendment goes, I, I think it would still pass. Uh, all that could be done by the beginning of next week. Um, wow. And then it's going to go to reconciliation because uh, th there's a House bill that exists. And the two bills have to match exactly before they can actually be passed and sent to the president's desk. So they're not going to match exactly anything with a lot of spending in it. And the, these, this bill does have massive, there's billions of line items of spending, uh, you know, for the military, for the intelligence agencies. There's a huge black box at the bottom that nobody gets to look into. And it just says $450 billion. Go suck it. You don't know. That, okay, let's literally say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the Senate version and the House version, they're going to both, both chambers will send a committee uh, that will sit down together and everything that matches between the two um, will just automatically go through. And then they'll go through line by line with all the stuff that doesn't match and they'll do horse trading. And if they can't come to any agreement, some of those things may get tossed. But so long as they can come to an agreement, you know, some if, if they do, they're going to have to talk about the UAP bill at that point the, the amendment uh and match that up against uh the galejos version and if they can't come to an agreement worst case scenario then it wouldn't then it'd be gone it wouldn't happen more likely they're going to have to have an initial discussion of the funding and one side's going to say uh, 750 million the other side's going to say 900 million and then somebody will go come on guys 825 you know and hopefully it just moves on and if that happens, it goes to Joe Biden's desk and it's going to get signed. And I have I told Luis earlier this week, um, I, I don't want to jinx us, but my confidence is extremely high. I, I think there isn't going to be a fight. I think the House is going to give way to almost all of what Gillibrand has. And I think it's going to become law. And uh, then the clock starts and we're going to have a new office and we're going to have new reports. Right. And some big things are coming. I have no doubt. Um, well, I want to backtrack just a little, Jess. Now, um, you've gone in depth into exactly what's in this amendment. Um, some of the, you know, key bullet points that a lot of UFO people have pointed out. Um, what, and I'd like your thoughts on this too, Luis. Um, what are you most excited about that you've seen in the Gillibrand amendment that is, you know, light years ahead of the this other sort of, um, you know, bill that we saw a few months ago uh what what stood out to you is like wow they're not messing around anymore like this isn't just you know what what we saw in the uap report like they're going after some big guns now i mean department of energy she's challenging as well um yeah what really stuck out to you within the amendments i guess yeah, what, what's big to me because of the world that i live and work in is probably not the same as what's biggest to a lot of people in the ufology community. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really exciting stuff. They want information about uh, physiological effects on human beings that have come, you know, in contact uh, with UAP. Uh, they're talking about, you know, gathering reports and information, not just from pilots and flight crews, but from the entire military, from the entire intelligence community, from civilians, you know, uh, all that stuff. But what excited me the most was the muscle. This has some real muscle in it. It's going to be a funded office. And the wording that the Senate is using, if it goes through as it's worded now, <coughs> excuse me, nothing is voluntary. It says you will supply. And when Congress tells them you will do this, you will do that, then they will do it or Congress will come back and cut their funding. Right. You know, Ooh. and so uh, this new office, ASRO, <clears throat> is, you know, when a report pops up, they're going to have people and the authority and the funding to immediately go out, start asking questions, look for matching information elsewhere. And when they go anywhere except down the black chimneys, which I, th I think we're still not going to get any access to um, 
in the military industrial complex, but everywhere else, including the Air Force that never wants to talk about it, including the Department of Energy who never wants to talk about it. They're going to get to go and say, hey, we need what you have on this and they're going to have to give it up or face consequences. So that was the most exciting part for me. Um, I really like the heavy muscle and teeth in this, but Luis probably feels something else. So No, yeah, I, Luis. that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, is the, oh, sorry. And also, oh, also, what I was going to add to that is I love that it has a public option here, is mm -hmm. that the, the everyday average Joe is also going to get a report uh, possibly more than once a year, which is really exciting. Um, I think with all of this also, and I know John Greenwald's here, uh, and I know John Greenwald hates leaks. I personally kind of like leaks. <laughs> I think leaks are great. I think leaks happen all the time in all sorts of different parts of government that lead to things changing. And so um, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple leaks also happen, but I think the teeth of the bill, the, the fact that if this office, this new ASRO office, which is the Anomaly Surveillance and Resolution Office, goes to a, a part of the intelligence community and says, hey, we want all of your files on this UAP stuff, and they come back and start giving them static, they can say, okay, no problem. We'll talk again when we have another N National Defense Authorization Act and your budget shrinks by half. So are you sure you want to keep that information from us? Because if you do, you're going to have a much smaller budget next year and they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to stick their heels in the ground and, and stick to their guns and not give up any info, or they're going to have their budget slashed. Right. That's real power. <laughs> that's yep. real. That's an office with, just like Jazz said, some actual muscle. It's not a task force with two people. This, this, this office is going to have a legitimate budget we we sort of were were speculating on what this budget could be jazz says he wouldn't be surprised if it's in the one two billion dollar range uh, spread out over a couple of years spread out yeah. over a couple <laughs> of years not every year but but that's an actual budget that is a real budget that they could hire people they can they can they can really organize this information and i think that's sort of the the biggest goal of this office is going to be able to take those different um, uh, buckets that was laid out in the first uh, uh, unclassified report that we got in June, mm -hmm. and they're going to really be able to establish drone, balloon, and other, and then hopefully get to a determination or a resolution because it's in the name of the office. They're trying yep. to get to a resolution of what other is. Is it? We got to talk adversary? about that political article later, but I'm going to shut up because I know we got to get John in here, and he's a big yeah, guy. no, absolutely. But those <laughs> those are the things I'm super excited about. Nice yep. man, I love that. Well, yeah, let's. We've talked about him enough. Let's bring him in. Our surprise guest for this morning, this afternoon. Mr. John Greenwald, welcome to Somewhere in the Skies again, my man. What's yep. up, guys? I am uh, super excited to be here. I always love uh, being on with you guys on different shows, and you guys are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. I know I just, you had a busy I just hear morning. That song. So. We're best friends. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 best friends. You know what? Too much. That song goes. Lou, I don't need more Broadway this morning, man. I get enough of it at work, <laughs> but um. Well, John, uh, before we get to why um, why I really have you here, some breaking news that you just released over at the Black Vault. Um, what are your thoughts about where we lay right now with the Gillibrand Amendment, everything going on in the Senate? And um, yeah, man, this stuff is making waves again in the mainstream like never before. Um, we're seeing some sensational headlines here and there. Um, but yeah, what do you think? What do you make of where we stand right now with all? You know, it, it's for me, it's exciting to see unfold. You know, I mean, uh, politicians coming out with new bills, new language, new verbiage they're 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 trying to submit and get passed. So I split in my my P little brain. I split it in how I view it, uh, the me, uh, how I'm excited about it. Uh, I want to see how it unfolds. But the other part is the researcher in me, which is uh, I have to work in the now, you know, mm -hmm. and right now there's a big pushback on people like me attempting to get information they're locking it down so even though the language is exciting and and again that half of me is you know really gung-ho about seeing how it turns out uh i'm worried as well uh, you know there's, there's part of me that sees the writing on the wall that a lot of information pertaining to uaps is classified uh they're shooting things down 
And that's what makes me fear that this office, albeit would be a huge revelation in itself. So I'm not taking away from that at all, nor am I trying to be a negative Nancy, uh, but rather just more of a realist on this is what they're doing in trying to lock things down. And even though there's a push for public hearings slash reports or whatever, uh, the, the, the final language may ultimately be, let's say we do get more reports. I fear the watered down uh, June version uh, is what we'll get. We'll get these, mm -hmm. you know, very broad overview. Oh, there, there's something, but we, we, we're not telling you what it is, but sure, there's a small percentage of what we don't have. So at the end of the day, we're still kind of left in the dark. So I view it two different ways, you know, and, and I don't want to take away from it. It's, it's, it's very exciting and it's really worth it. But in the same respect, the writing's on the wall that the government and military want to continue what they've done for decades and push back and say, no, even though we're looking into this now, we'll tell you that we are, you're not getting any of it. Uh, and that's get what worries me a little. Out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sign no, off. Yeah, thanks I'm for your kidding. time. No. I think, I think you're is, right. I think you're right. Yeah, that was the harsh reality. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz is like throwing things at his monitor. <laughs> well, well, no, John, no, you know, no. You know, I, let, let me disagree with that. I, I think I think you're absolutely yeah, right. I, I can still be excited about the fact that there's going to be a congressional group and someone on the civilian side gathering this information and I'll sit there like a dog hoping that something falls off the table onto the floor and maybe there'll be some things they can release and we can keep pushing for that. But yeah, they're probably gonna collect a lot of stuff that we're not gonna get to see because we have massive overclassification problems in the government, everybody knows this. Yeah. And uh, But that doesn't mean that it's not useful and that they aren't gathering information and a body of work that sometime later might be declassified. You know, sure. And even if it's not, they're working on real issues involving this subject instead of pretending it doesn't exist or it's not happening. Yeah. And I'll make one prediction about John Greenwald, our, our very famous guest that we all know and love, <laughs> is that he's already sitting there and going over every government document that's been put out oh, yeah. about this bill as it goes through. And we're all excited about the language in the bill and the interviews that are being done. John's over there with pencil and he's scribbling down every name he sees. And there's probably already been a hundred FOIA requests written. <laughs> I would like all correspondence between this individual and anyone else who is, that has this language in it. And by the time they even get done with the bill, John's going to already just drown them in requests. <laughs> so, well, here's here's you know what I really Guilt, got excited charged. about uh, yeah. yesterday during that political article um, and Gillibrand's first statements on this bill. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds kind of dumb because <laughs> uh, it's sounding dumb as I'm thinking about it. But this idea that her kids, her children were like, Mom, we want to know about the UFOs, <laughs> you know, like, tell us about the aliens. And she's like, I'm trying to like, I'm, I, I think there's um, like, I don't think and I think this was a huge fear. And, and the thing that I love about this is that the announcement of this amendment, not only with the co-sponsors that hopped on conveniently after it was announced because i think they saw politically speaking this is popular this is right. something people want to know about and so i think that wall of secrecy is i agree we're not going to get the bodies we're not going to get the craft we're not going to get the um yet but yet yet and i think that's many years down the road but I think that other category starts to become a little bit more defined as to what it could be, what they think it is, the possibilities of it, and just the fact that you have Avril Haines saying extraterrestrially these things could be – it could be one of these things. Uh, and then you had yesterday in this very same article – um, uh, Gillibrand say alien, you know, and Jazz said that was going to happen this week. Don't be shocked if a senator that word pops out of their mouth. I wasn't she in expecting it. once, she yep. said other entities once, yep. and she said the unknown twice in a very clear reference, right? Wow. And that's and that's and that's to me, that's the thing that I'm getting excited about is that I think politicians see it and go. Oh, this is a chance to maybe get some votes. This is a chance yeah, to yep. get a little bit of popularity or maybe pass a bill that I want passed because the people want transparency on this. And and this is what I, I've and I know this is sort of a naive way to think about it. But I think if politicians can bring truth and trust through this topic, where else does that bleed into? What other policies and things in America does that that 
that start bleeding into because I think it's apparent that the more honest and transparent you are, no matter what the topic, it's going to win you political favor. And I and I think that's encouraging, for, especially for the senators and congressmen that maybe have been there for two decades. And they see, oh, people just want honesty? Okay, yeah, let me do a little bit more think? of that. You know, and yeah. so what a concept. Know, what a concept, right? So I think that to me is where it gets exciting. And and but I agree with John. I think we've got a long way to go. I think there yeah. is gonna be it's gonna be pulling teeth still. It's not gonna be something that just they barf out of their mouth and all of a sudden everybody here in this community is happy. I don't think that's the way it's gonna go down, but it's fun to see yes. that we're living literally in a moment in history and we get to see it change right in front of our face. It's yeah. happening in real time. And that's just, that, and it's, that gets me going. Lou, it's going to be messy. Like no oh, one yeah. ever said disclosure. If you even consider this disclosure, I know a lot of people do a lot of people don't, but um, no one ever said it was going to be easy or, you know, clean it's a messy muddy thing um politically militarily everything um even theologically um but yeah i never saw this being where we would be having this conversation in 2021 it's we've come a long way since kucinich you know even mentioned he had a ufo sighting let's look at that um yep. and now look at where we are with the words et and alien and extraterrestrially which i didn't even know was a word uh being it's used not. by national intelligence <laughs> directors oh well then there we go Jim. That, but it there we go now, right there um I, I, we got to move on to john stuff but one yes. one of the point the, the thing that yeah, john yeah, said please. i think it goes down another level even deeper getting members of congress getting the civilian side of the pentagon that are public facing getting mm -hmm. them to come out of the closet to go along and say things that's a big move but as i'm sure it, I, i'm not trying to put words in john's mouth in the background on the other side of that wall there's a whole bunch of those people that get all that money i was talking about at the top of the show the money that's in that black box at the bottom of the ndaa that you don't get to see mm -hmm. the people that have never wanted to talk to anybody they don't care about politics they don't care how popular it is there's going to be a lot of them who have their heels pushed into the sand and it's going to take dynamite to move them if they ever move at all just my opinion not trying to depress anybody but if you honestly believe there are some special access programs out there that are working on you know we always hear all the typical things has anybody been doing crash retrieval do they have any bodies you know all these other things even if that exists they're not going to turn around and go, oh, we didn't know this was popular. Here you go. No, they're going to be fighting tooth and claw and they will hide all the money and they will hide anything that John Greenwald would ever be able to chase. They're not going to let their documents get out. Their names aren't going to get out. And there's going to be a wall that if it ever gets broken down, it's probably not going to be in my lifetime. I am challenge I'm accepted, going. Jazz. Challenge accepted. Exactly. Challenge accepted. I'm curious well, to yeah. know if, if John, I want John, what do you think? Do you think that maybe this this grip that you see, especially through your FOIA process, loosens a little bit it, in conjunction with NASA and this James Webb telescope? Like if we in this new year, in the first three to four months, get confirmation of techno signatures and other star systems, um, do you think maybe that will help your job a little bit as far as getting some of this information uh, that you're having a hard time pulling? Um, it, it all kind of depends on the time frame I look at to answer that question. Meaning, mm -hmm. you know, if I go back 10 years, it seems like it's easier. 20 years, it seems like it's, it's getting easier with all of these developments. However, if I look at a time frame of just the last three years, right. uh, I would respectfully argue it's getting harder. So again, just because I've, you know, I'm getting old and I've been around the block long, you know, in this general field. To, to gauge whether or not it's getting easier depends on the time frame that I'm looking at. Uh, and the reason why I say when you look at a short time frame, it's getting harder is you look at the public affairs side, you're down to one person that speaks for at least four major um, entities within the federal government and, and military structure. Could I that, freeze that are, or John? I'm sorry? Oh, I John's think I... fine, Jez. I think it was you, buddy. 
Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, you know, you're down to, again, the public affairs side, you're down to one person that's fielding all those questions. That in itself makes things very, very hard. In September of 2019, that wasn't the case. I was able to get the Navy to go on the record, and I extracted information that said that the Gimbal, Fleer, and GoFast were unidentified. This was before they ever officially released those videos uh, uh, that uh, next year. Uh, my point being, again, you go back two years, extracting information was easier. Now it's much, much harder with the FOIA also running into roadblocks where, uh, yeah, we're taught we're having the conversation and that's really good. We need to have it. We need people like Avi Loeb out there, people in the scientific community w uh, willing to take the, the challenge, uh, the politicians that are willing to take the, the challenge. All of that is is great. But when it comes to extracting through FOIA, uh, I've had a lot of pushback. One thing I wrote about a week ago was how everything that was sent to the UAP task force case wise uh, was considered classified 100% across the board. Now I have appealed that and I have tried to fight it and that case is ongoing. That's uh, only about a week old. Uh, my appeal case that is. Uh, but again, my overall point is that it's it's very difficult because they shut all that down. I still do have hope on the classified version of the UAP report from June. Uh, I have had a case open for those who aren't aware, uh, not through FOIA, but this is part of the uh, Code of Federal Regulations that mandates a government agency has to review classified information for release. Uh, contrary to some what big names out there have said, uh, the information does not have to be 25 years old. That is a huge misconception. Uh, it can be an hour old. Uh, it could be three minutes old, and you can file uh, under a um, uh, code of federal regulations, depends on the agency, but you can mandate that they review that information for release. And I still do have high hopes that at least a portion of that classified report will come out. So um, to back to your question, when, when you have a um, loosening of the lips, so to speak, and more people are talking, uh, that sounds great, and it, and it is. But also the other part of me goes, why are they talking? You know, right. why NASA? I think I have a, a personal opinion. This isn't meant to be the the, the fact uh, that I'm laying down here again. Please do share the facts, John. Spe speculation only on the NASA <laughs> side. But I but that doesn't surprise me that uh, a NASA head like that would come out and start talking about aliens, because if somebody who heads NASA doesn't believe in that, uh, why would you give them funding? You know, like, why would they lead NASA? You, that's kind of a default position that, that I would hope that they would take. Uh, and if he comes out and says, I believe aliens are out there, great. That's why we're giving him money, because he's he's got that mindset to to traverse the cosmos. If on the other end, you got a NASA director going, yeah, we're probably the only ones, but maybe we'll find algae somewhere. It's like, OK, well, <laughs> that's really dumb. Um, you know, well, that's not fair, what NASA though, should I mean, be about. I could, can you remember any other NASA administrator kind of speaking as openly and and open-mindedly about it as Bill Nelson? I can't, I can't think no, of it. You know, you're absolutely pushing, right. Yeah. But um, he's connecting it to the verbiage of the time, which is the UAP and potential extraterrestrially. Mm. That's for you, Jazz. Extraterrestrially connected phenomena. And so I think uh, very much, I think, Luis, you were saying it about how these buzzwords are creating popularity. So they just use the buzzwords and all of a sudden they're on the spotlight of every major news organization for having commented on UFOs. Uh, in the same respect, he may be doing that as well. Life in the universe has long been talked about uh, by NASA. I mean, that's why they do stuff like the Hubble, like all of these sky searches, you know, through different space-based systems and stuff like that. Uh, sending probes, uh, again, looking for life. In my opinion, scientifically, that's the same thing. Uh, but Bill Nelson is, is simply attributing it to the buzzword of today, which is the the UAP topic. And he segued from that to life in the universe. And then that one panel that he did like six months back or whatever it was, he threw it to one of his scientists. Question was about UAPs. But then the scientists went all about pretty much the astrobiological side of this and looking for life. So that that's not me taking away from what they're saying. Don't get me wrong. What they're saying is is amazing. Uh, but in fairness, I think that they're connecting it to the buzzwords of today. But NASA has long talked about life in the universe, and that's what they do. I mean, they're, they're I, I think John's right, but I would also hate to underscore the evolution of Bill Nelson. Keep in mind, Bill Nelson has been 
in the military, in the government, at, at various levels, uh, an astronaut. He's been in public life for way over 40 years and never a peep, nothing about any of this. And then it was like somebody threw a switch at the beginning of the year. And now you can't get the guy to shut up about aliens. <laughs> you know, he's down there at the National Cathedral. He was answering a totally different question and they were getting ready to move on without being asked. He jumped in and said, wait, wait, I haven't even <laughs> talked about extraterrestrial life yet. You know, and everybody stops. And in my mind, I could see someone in the Pentagon, perhaps Susan Goff, sitting there face palming and going, <laughs> Get this guy off the frigging stage! <laughs> you know she got out of her ice cream truck and just started yeah, running yeah, to the yeah. cathedral. <laughs> yeah. Hey, John, I'm wondering that that ten to twenty. You said if it's twenty years back in time, it's a been a little bit easier to grab that information versus three years ago. Is that a? Is that because the systems are a little more sensitive and classified from three years ago versus twenty years ago? Or, or are you not asking for things that are revealing these classified operating systems? No, I, th I think that uh, in 25 years, a lot changes. Um, right. and, and first and foremost, after 25 years of doing this, I still learn things about the FOIA all the time. I don't think there's such a thing as a FOIA expert because there's so many different facets to it. Uh, but with that being said, I think that after 25 years, you learn how to look for information different. Um, and so that's why, again, a little bit easier just because you've learned to navigate the waters, so to speak, to to get the information on top of that, too, on their side, technology changes to where they can search for information better. You know, when I'm filing in 1996 as a 15 year old kid, you know, and I'm, I'm asking for things, uh, their search engines, their databases, their organization, a lot of that has been transformed in the last 25 years. So them searching in 1996 is a lot different than them searching in 2021. So that also kind of kind of adds to it. When it comes to classified systems and asking to, for that to be searched, I have not uh, kind of uh, faltered from asking for classified information. Um, so, so if I understood what you meant correctly, uh, that hasn't changed with me. I've always gone after both unclassified level information and classified information uh, in, in these FOIA searches. Uh, I, I can't think of an instance where I said you can omit classified information from the scope of the search, which you can do, by the way, to help expedite it, because then there's really kind of very little review process for unclassified only material. And, and in fact, I do take that back. Uh, I, I did file a request for unclassified only information when I found out that the gimbal, FLIR, and GoFast were considered unclassified from their inception. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had done a request attempting to find any other unclassified level, again, just to expedite that that uh, angle of trying to search for things came up negative, but um, you know, that, that would probably, uh, that's a super rare instance I've ever done that. Awesome. Well, I, we do have a super chat here. I'll get to it quick. Yeah. I didn't even mention guys, if you want to help out the show, super chats open, you can ask questions of our guests, get your comments highlighted. Um, but John, um, yeah, before we move on, if you wouldn't mind answering what CJ asked there, um, do you have, a lawyer or an attorney that helps you with this sort of stuff if it gets sticky or muddy or um yeah how does that work in your world yeah sure no it's a great question uh i have none on, on retainer for foia related matters uh over the years though i have had the honor and privilege of being associated with quite a few very well-known uh, attorneys that deal with these matters. Uh, I don't like to name drop or anything, so I don't want to point them out, but uh, they're very well known in the arena where we have all kind of come to know each other. And I don't take advantage of the friendship and, and um, being colleagues, uh, so to speak. I'm not an attorney, but just, just kind of working in the same arena. Try not to take advantage of it, but sometimes when I have a legal question, I'll reach out to them. Most of what I do on a legal sense, I've kind of just taught myself over the years. Um, I think I was a lawyer in a past life somewhere. Uh, I worked with a lot of legal issues in uh, television production, rights and clearances issues and stuff like that. Um, and although that sounds completely unrelated, very much legalese is, is very, you know, very much related depending upon the topic. It, it, you can kind of attribute the skill set you learn from here and, and just kind of change the wording and, and uh, associate it over here and it kind of still fits. So when I do appeals and stuff uh, from a legal standpoint, uh, I don't at this point have really a need uh, for the attorney. 
um, when you get into litigation, uh, that's, that's when you essentially bring somebody in that's much smarter than me to fight it in the court systems. I just haven't had a, a real reason to do it. Um, because those are, those are tough cases. And that's why the, those, when you hear about freedom of information act cases, they're done by these gigantic, you know, either nonprofit organizations or major media outlets. Uh, I will say Jason Leopold, who's an investigative journalist right now, he's he's uh, at BuzzFeed. He was at Vice News prior. Uh, he's written about some of my stuff over the years. Uh, I pinpoint him because when you look at what he's done uh, and he's got more lawsuits, I think, in the FOIA arena than anybody, he's backed by major media outlets to help him, you know, not probably not only finance it, but also the name behind it helps in those types of lawsuits. So whole point being, it's very, very difficult when you get into judicial review to do that when you're one person, when you're a media outlet or a major nonprofit, it's a little bit easier. I just DM'd you a question, by the way, because I don't want to take up the whole show. Maybe it's something you can address on one of your shows later on or something. Okay. Thanks, Chez. Thank you for answering that, John. Um, yeah, well, no let's uh, let's move on to um, your latest FOIA success. Um, yes. And that was some breaking news that you brought today. A new Navy UAP case that, to your knowledge, my knowledge, a lot of us out there, has not been made public yet. So um, Never let's heard see of it. if this works. Yep, there it is. Um, there's your latest. So, John, yeah, if you don't mind, man, running us through a little bit of what this sure. is, what you found, whatever you want to share with us. Absolutely. Yeah, this was Thanks. this was well, fun. He explains I, that. Let me just jump backstage. Absolutely. For a second. Yes. Well, and I was going to say, John says there's no such thing as a FOIA expert, but there is a FOIA king. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been called worse. Bend the knee. Bend the <laughs> knee. Uh, nah, but I appreciate that. Um <laughs> So yeah, so this this was a pretty cool find. Uh, and again, I'm not sure how much of your audience likes FOIA stuff, so I'll go over this very briefly. I did a much longer video, which I integrated into the article, that kind of shows the paper trail. But very quickly, um, those who do navigate FOIA, what I always recommend is you look at every single character and word on a document because there are leads in everything. Uh, for example, that, that cl uh, unclassified version of the UAP report in June. Uh, only nine pages. I filed more than 50 cases out of that. Um, when I first read it, I was really let down. But then when I, you know, took a deep breath and said, okay, there's something here. And then read it again, uh, 50 different cases stemmed out of that. So you look for everything. And these were documents I got in 2019. And there was uh, their internal communications from the US Navy, all about uh, UAPs. And I targeted certain individuals. Jazz was was not joking when he says I look at names and and try and pick up who to go after because that's exactly what I did with this, where you look for those names and then go after material. Look for program names, go after material. Look for dates, go after material. So this particular one was in a stack of, you know, hundreds of different pages. And they mentioned this OLA weekly about a briefing to some staffers, assuming at the time they were Senate staffers. Uh, about a UAP program office. Now that wasn't hundred percent accurate, but I knew that this OLA weekly would be something to go after. Now OLA is Office of Legislative Affairs. And within the US Navy, what they essentially do is work with Congress, the Senate on legislative issues, uh, communications, uh, senators and, and congressmen will get involved in VA type issues. Uh, and so, so again, they, they've got a multitude of, of things that they deal with. And every week they have this OLA weekly that talks about all of the various issues and it is very wide ranging. I published the entire document, you can get it. So I started chasing this and it took more than two years to get this OLA weekly. It could be nothing, like when you file FOIA requests, you have no idea what you're gonna get. It could be gold, uh, it could be a complete waste of time. Thankfully, this one uh, was, um, I would say a gem. I'm not sure if it was solid gold, but uh, it was definitely a gem. Got the OLA weekly, and what they were referring to internally at the Navy was partially accurate. It was about UAPs, or in this particular instance, they talked about anomalous aerial, uh, aerial vehicle uh, encounters that were briefed to the Senate Armed Services Committee, PSMs, or professional staff members. And then it shows you the date, 16 January. The document was 2019, so this is 2019. An FA-18 pilot from VFA-103 met with the Senate Armed Services Committee. They named the people here. They blacked those out. 
the Armed Services Committee staff members have continuing interest in unidentified aerial vehicle intercepts that have occurred in the working airspace off the U.S. East Coast. And this is the designator for the pilot, which is redacted, gave a detailed brief on his personal encounter. Short and sweet, but you start dissecting that, that we know that there was a briefing on 16 January 2019. Uh, Brian Bender was about three to four months out from breaking his story on the Navy guidelines that went out. So the time frame of these are, are very fascinating to kind of hone in on. Based on Alex Dietrich's Twitter posts, for those who pay attention, she had posted with a timestamp when her and David Fravor were in front of the Capitol building. Pay attention closely to that photo. You'll see the date at the top, which was 2018. That's one of the earlier briefings that I'm aware of that you kind of pick up and go make a mental note and go, okay, 2018, they were doing these briefings, at least with Dietrich and Fravor. What else was there? This was January of 2019. His personal encounter, well, we can rule out Fravor uh, simply because he was not VFA 103. We can rule out um, Ryan Graves, uh, Danny. I've I've never known the pronunciation of his last, Alcoin. Uh, Forgive me if I've botched that. Uh, They were profiled by the New York Times. Uh, the Roosevelt encounters, they were at um, uh, w- with the USS Roosevelt uh, off the southern coast of the East Coast. Uh, VFA-103 is stationed at NAS Oceana, which is in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So you start dissecting this and you realize absolutely nothing that we know of that I can recall, and I invite anybody to please, please correct me, uh, this sighting is brand new. So we know it would happen either January of 2019 or prior. Uh, they're part of VFA uh, 103, and VFA 103 is known as the Jolly Rogers, again, stationed at NAS Oceana in Virginia. So f- all evidence shows that this particular sighting within this squadron uh, was brand new. And so that came out from this OLA Weekly. Uh, what's new today, I published this yesterday. I did reach out to the Pentagon, had nothing by the time I wrote the article. I have updated it today. And the Pentagon said that the entire briefing was classified and they will not be commenting on it. So I could not get confirmation on, you know, is this a publicly available, uh, like a gimp, like, you know, was this the pilot that became part of VFA 103? He shot the, the gimbal video. And so he's there testifying, you know, can you say anything? Uh, no, it was completely closed off because it was classified. So, um, Cool little gem, in my opinion, because it adds, even though we know that there are more cases we haven't heard about, this locks it in, in an official release. And for those who are either just more of the uh, spectators and want to know more information, it's a small piece of the puzzle, but a piece nonetheless. For the researchers out there like myself, you look at that and now that branches off into trying to figure out, okay, now we have documented proof a briefing took place. What that means is I was able to file a case right before I published the article, filed a case with the U.S. Navy for everything that was relating to the briefing, because I would imagine, but can't prove yet, but this case will bore this out, uh, that they would have to approve the information that was going to be presented to the Senate staffers uh, or took part in creating the materials or submitted videos of the UAP encounter. Who knows? But my guess is something was there. So this establishes a foundation, and then the cases go from there, and we see what happens. And you said you found awesome. 50 of them, John? Uh, filed 50, 50 cases or 50 I fi- From the UAP report in June. Okay. Just to, I was using um, that as an example that you always look for it. little gems. This particular one spawned maybe two or three. Wow. Hey, that's yeah. all we can ask for. That's, yeah. that's amazing, John. I mean, um. Yeah, I don't. Jazz, you're muted. Oh, Jazz is muted. Um, before we move on, I do have another super chat here. The end game for Elizondo Mellon is not only disclosure, but also to get dedicated new government branch with hundreds of billions of dollars per year funding for human non human relations. Um, so, John is kind of entering into exopolitic territory with that. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think with everything that's happening right now, are we moving towards? sort of an exopolitical uh, landscape with all of this? Or is it much too early to even make a educated guess on something like that? What do you guys think? Up, oh, Jazz, Jazz, you're muted. Jazz, still muted. Oh, so I mean, do you have a button that you can hit on your nope. end? Nope. Unmute guess. It was all me. He's right. 
Unmute. Oh, I'm trying. Our first snafu of the day. Jazz, I'm going to um, take you out and bring you back in. Is that cool, brother? Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, just click on the link again, if you don't mind, Jazz, over on Twitter. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Now that he's I knew gone. this. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> no. Jazz, we love you. I knew something would go wrong, and it was definitely on my end. Um, I, yeah, what do you guys it. think? Do you, do you have any for, thoughts? For me, on... it's – I mean, I don't want to blab too much. I just did. But uh, for me, it's too preliminary. I think it's a government, military, absolutely works in a step process. I think their first step is taking UAP seriously, which it seems like they have, establishing a research base. But I think that they're far off from doing a – non-human contact uh, research uh, angle. Okay. Um, so yeah, for me, it, it's a little bit too preliminary. And there's a lot of private or organizations that have worked on communications like not only SETI, uh, but I believe the other one is uh, METI, M-E-T-I. Uh, I may have that acronym wrong, but that's by Dr. Doug Vaykoch, who I interviewed oh, yeah. years ago uh, for a Discovery Channel show that I had produced. And it's amazing when you get into extraterrestrial communications and, you know, who who speaks for humanity and what was amazing in that. And this is a whole show in itself. I won't go off on a tangent, but um, essentially, like, in my opinion, the scientific community on a worldwide scale is kind of clueless on who will actually speak for humanity. Some groups have an angle and some groups want to be the ones that may speak for humanity, but there's like no worldwide global initiative to say if aliens show up who leads the charge is it the right. un is it america is it you know who is it um is it the dolphins maybe uh you know you never know who it's who's... definitely not the miami dolphins they're they're <laughs> yeah. hot garbage <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it's a fascinating topic but w to get the the government in on that and fund research on it uh i don't i, I don't see we're close to that Okay. Yes, for, as far as a non-human exopolitical landscape, I kind of agree with John, but from a human exopolitical landscape, I think we're getting pretty close. I mean, we've established the Space Force. Uh, just the other day, you know, Russia blew up a satellite and, and we forced the International Space Station to go into essentially a space bunker. <laughs> um, you know, so I think from a, there is exopolitics is where I think we're getting closer and closer to that one. How do how close we are to adding a non-human element or conversation into the exopolitics uh, arena. I'd say we're a few years out from that. We still have a long way to go. Just to, we, we just need to, as a government, as a nation, understand there is a there there. They are there. There is something in the sky that our government cannot decipher or understand. And it's an issue because we don't know what it is. We don't know what the intentions are. And that's what this bill is looking to uh, give resolution to. So uh, when I when I wrote that article about will anybody be saying the word aliens, that was one of the things I kind of touched on. I'm just curious what you guys think. Uh, you know, particularly Ryan, what do you think? If we have Azro working, you know, hand in hand with members of Congress, if, if they come out and actually say the words as they've started to, like we don't know yet, but maybe this could be extraterrestrials. I, I think John brings up an excellent point. Has anyone in the United States government ever spent any time saying, well, what if it is? What do we do then? Do we have a plan? Do we have a, like, would we try to make mm -hmm. contact if that's even possible? If, if they decide to get hostile, c could we even defend ourselves? I mean, is that something, do you guys see that office tackling? Like, because it seems to me, like, whether or not it turns out to be because we don't know yet but if it does turn out to be the a word shouldn't we have some sort of plan in place like what happens next well yeah jazz um and you know i we've got one more story for john um that he's going to share with us but to answer your question i would turn to your guys interview with lee spiegel you know there have been these rumors of these manuals throughout the years whether it was the air force or um, other branches of the military on how to deal with these things if they were to happen. Um, so, I mean, Lou, what do you think after hearing Lee talk about that manual that he uncovered through the work of, uh, I mean, well, I read the manual, Heine, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I read the manual. It's absolutely mind blowing, but some people in the discord, we had a discussion about it after uh, the show in the discord. I'm curious to know the, uh, the editors, 
uh, and uh, military personnel who wrote the manual. I want to also see what else they wrote and yeah. and do a little background on, on them uh, before you know, we could call it a smoking gun, but it was really cool. And I know John's got to leave here in a few minutes. So I, if we could get to his second story, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Let's oh, yeah, and I'm so, so yeah. sorry. Normally I would want to stay longer. I just got to bounce no, out man. of here at 11. Absolutely. Let's do it. No, yeah, what's, what's this cool eBay is, thing? <laughs> yeah. What's cool is this may actually be a kind of a fun segue to, to, to go back to what jazz said really, really quickly about the question of who, who speaks for humanity. Can we fight them off? Um, I did that show for Discovery where we talked about extraterrestrial communication. And even though that was quite a few years ago now, what the, my biggest takeaway was that we really just don't have a plan for the communication. I was later hired to do a show for History Channel about if aliens attack, how why would they do it and how would they do it and could humanity survive? And it was all about all these different scenarios. The, the, the series was all these scenarios that you know, could potentially end the human race or see where we might end up. It, I got the alien episode, of course. Uh, and essentially, you can see that we would be left in the dust. And, and that is such a fascinating topic, I could bore you to death for hours on. But uh, doing those shows, though, it really made me realize that humanity is not ready as a collective whole to communicate or, God forbid, fight off. What's interesting, though, is, and that's kind of the lead into this, uh, when it comes to fighting them off is extraterrestrial warfare uh, that is this 1965 document. Now, really quickly, it showed up on eBay for those that saw this on um, Twitter. I think it kind of gained a little bit of traction. This is an how, active... How much did you pay for it, John? <laughs> well, you can, you can see nothing, by the way, because uh, I yet, chased it through yet. FOIA. But, but you, you can see here a million dollars, right? That, so, And this is an active... Oh. Uh, active listing right now. So this is a live view of, of eBay. They still have it. It's a million bucks. Wow. And there really wasn't anything. I mean, it's a legit copy. It did look legit to me uh, simply because of uh, the way that the um, stamps were, uh, the different downgrade to unclassify. All that actually looked really legit. So I assumed that it was a real document. And it was made by the Combat Operations Research Group or CORG. Uh, this is through the U.S. Army at the time in the in the mid 1960s. They did these types of research papers, and so this cool guy wanted a million bucks. He wanted a smooth mill for this thing, uh, and really didn't give anything away uh, of what the document was about. You know, a little abstract here. So I chased it through FOIA, and quite a few months later, uh, ended up getting it. And here it is. I mean, literally. <laughs> uh, for free. Uh, I love yeah. it. I love it. You just, wah, you, just, you just completely destroyed the value <laughs> of that in the market. <laughs> you know, I because uh, what I'm, I have an eBay uh, account and I was going to text the, the link to the guy with no with no message. Just te text him the link. Just say, hey, look. So, so anyway, the whole document is here and it's about essentially fighting, uh, in the space domain and, and, uh, you know, they use the word extraterrestrial warfare. Um, and you see how, uh, it kind of breaks down how we would fight in a space environment. This was 1965. And even though these types of papers do not, uh, and you, they even say it in the front, they don't necessarily ref reflect the views uh, of the either author or the uh, United States Army. So it's uh, that's their disclaimer that this isn't an, an official view. It's still interesting because they, they write these papers and they sanction these papers. In some cases, they fund these types of research papers to look into stuff like this. And, uh, and this was, again, 1965. They were talking about warfare in space and how we would fight it in different environments and stuff like that if we were to establish let's say a lunar outpost and got attacked, you know, how so would some, fight? somebody has to go to eBay and go into the comments and go, or you could get it for free from John yeah. and, just, <laughs> and put a link in there. Yeah. Like, Oh dude, sorry to ruin your retirement. I was just going to you know? say guys, our super chats open. If you guys want to donate and get to a million dollars today, <laughs> yeah, we'll get the of this. Yeah. but there goes that idea. Thanks, John. Thank no, I'm just yeah. your brother. This is so cool. When was, you brought this to me last minute, I'm like, yeah, we have to cover this. Please. Yeah. And that's why I was a kind of a couple minutes past. I was really trying to get back into my office. And then this literally popped in uh, to my email. I'm bringing it up really quick. So yeah, it was about 45 minutes to an hour before you asked me to come on. 
And I was yes. like, all right, I can get that done. And I was, so I was kind of finishing up a couple things unrelated to the Black Vault and then trying to get that on. I was like, if you give me till 10, 15, let, let, wait, is, you guys is, will love this. Is there um, anything love quickly, it. anything that you read in here that you found interesting that maybe could lead you on another FOIA rabbit hole? Uh I'll be honest with you, since I literally have not just got I mean, it, it was, yeah, yeah, able to read it. Yeah. Uh, no, usually a lot of times what you do is you jump to the references. Mm. Uh, I mean, obviously the meat of the, the, the paper here that I'm kind of thumbing through, you're going to get a lot of information, but it's usually the references. And sadly, this document has none, mm. uh, but references in the back give you literally sometimes hundreds of leads and what the references are are where they like the footnotes stuff like that so if they get a fact from somewhere or they talk about a program name they'll have like a number two or three or four and then you go to the footnote uh kind of like what wikipedia does right so you read the whole article and then at the bottom they have all of those those references and footnotes same with government documents so you always look for that this sadly didn't have anything uh, but it, it does kind of go into uh, detail about, you know, the struggles of warfare. Um, I didn't notice any program names, but I, I did note that the uh, cover is secret, uh, that it was stamped secret. So at one time this was a secret at a, on a secret level. Uh, usually in papers like this, the reason, wa w the reason was that in 1965, something they talked about in here uh, gave it a secret uh, designator uh, later it went down to confidential, which is the lowest level. And then it was uh, unclassified here. And uh, let me see. It doesn't have the date. Hey, yeah, Akashi Chris, we have our first eBay fund for it. So thanks. <laughs> Akashi, Chris. Sorry, John. <laughs> no, what no, that's saying? okay. Uh, you're almost at the mill. 1965, you said? Yeah, 65, it was written 74 okay. fully declassified to an unclassified level. Uh, <laughs> but this is a prime example, though, of... Um, even though documents are at an unclassified level, doesn't mean they're really readily available to the general public. And and right. not to give you a cheesy end here, but that's why I do what I do, you know, is that now we don't have to pay a million dollars to see some guy's copy of this. We don't have to go to some obscure library that has it collecting dust, you know, in a corner somewhere, because I did find a few references to it uh, in uh, not public libraries, but like military, uh, you know, military libraries that they were archiving a copy of it. Um, and that's all problematic because you have very few places to get it. When I got this through FOIA, you can see what I did, put it online. Now anybody can download it for free and, and, and get it. So that really has always been kind of a main focal point of the Black Vault, even though I, I love UFO secrets and JFK assassination material, stuff like that. It's just the collective whole of being able to share this information with other people. It doesn't cost you anything. You go on there, can download it, and there you go. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. John, this, Thanks, this ties into man. the question I DM'd you, but I, if you don't mind, just sure. real quick before you have to go. No problem. When you received this document, because I can't tell just by looking at it, and I haven't been to your site yet, obviously, and I will go be digesting this later, Um is this digitized? Like, is it searchable or is it just a series of scans? Mm -hmm. uh, so it was not searchable when I got it. It was a series of scans that the army sent me through a, a digital copy through email. Um, okay. A lot of times when they make these, they're either not knowledgeable enough or they don't know how, or they don't care to make it a searchable document. So before I posted it, you can see here, I made it searchable. That's how, why you can highlight the text. So oh, everything that's readable by the OCR software that I use uh, is then um, made into searchable text. Once awesome. it gets into search engines and stuff, people will be able to find it, uh, and then they can find it you know, on the uh, actual page that I created that precedes it, which is this one here. That is uh, so awesome, man. And for people who that. don't know, um, I wrote an article about this recently. John has like all every imaginable JFK assassination document, and yeah. none of them were searchable until he got them. He yeah. has an entire library. I correct me if I'm wrong. I think the total number of pages document it goes into the millions. And John created this like three thousand page long index, and you can search everything if you want to find out something about that. So that's awesome because the government doesn't do the work, but John's doing that work. Yeah, I'll JFK the... ass. I thought that's what you were searching for. <laughs> you know, it's just a trick. You don't have to spell the whole word, and it'll pop up. <laughs> Um, no, this is. A I didn't. I didn't example. quite realize I did. I blasted ass on your show right now. 
Um, that sweet JFK ass. That's what you get here on Somewhere in the Skies. Yeah. I mean, John, if so, you want to FOIA that, I'd be the first to read it, sir. That's uh that's a that's a different that's a different black it's a vault different, we're talking yeah. about. Different shell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so this is this is what Jazz is talking about. So it's it's a full database and, and Jazz is absolutely right. I thought about this in the back of my head while he was talking that when uh, when NARA, the National Archives released uh, through the Trump administration, those documents, they did so in the worst way possible. And um, uh, they did so you couldn't search them, you had to download these gigantic zip files, none of which worked for the first couple of days, or it was very hard to get in. So once I got all the data, I just literally started a process and converted everything. So you can see here all the different releases, download them 39 gigs of uh, of information of PDFs that you can download, but all searchable. And like Jazz says, there's a 3032 page index to break it all down. Damn, um, but that's but that's incredible. It, it was uh, yeah, it was a, a big challenge uh, for for the time, you know, trying to get everything. But uh, case in point, though, the government, even though you, you have freedom of information and the freedom to information, uh, essentially, you've got to sometimes work to make it work for you and creating these types of databases and and searchable uh, d PDF documents and stuff is not always easy to do. But that's what I've tried to do here is just make it uh, make it easy for everybody. Thanks. John. And John and does I, all this for free, by for the way, free. if you're looking for a good place to go support, John has his own YouTube channel. There's a number of ways. He doesn't charge anybody for any of this. Anybody can go to the Black Vault. If you want to go research JFK assassination, you're not going to pay a goddamn dime. And you can search, text search, all that stuff. I, I'm still in awe. I'm amazed by the work you do, sir. Yeah. I appreciate that, Jazz. You're hired as my personal PR. <laughs> well, John, I, I'll end with saying you were the reason I ever got my first ever FOIA response. Um, had you not showed me how to do it properly, because I did do exactly what you said. I went to some department and said, give me file, UFO Tehran. Just mm -hmm. give it to me. And, of course, I came to you and said, is this how I should do it? And you <laughs> walked me through, like, how, which department to go to, which might have something, keywords to use. And without you doing that, um, I would not have it framed here in my apartment, my nice. first ever response. So That's I awesome. do have to thank you for that and everything you do, man. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize how hard you work on this um to get this stuff out to the public so um well, I, I gotta that. i just push some buttons and hope for the best but thank no, you no you don't we all know we know there's a lot to I, also, it, but, I also just to just uh, to just to butter up john's buns before he gets out of here the people that you inspire <laughs> that that are sort of carrying starting to pick up the torch on the stuff that you do for example britain wonderland or even mm -hmm. um uh sean rosh over at witness citizen like they they're, they're they're following your lead and they're getting some really cool documents and, and you know not getting any answers of course like all of us but they're, they're finding some cool stuff and it's and it's fun to read and it's fun to talk about it's fun to to, to look at so that's all thanks to you man you know you that's you, awesome I appreciate you've got the that. machete you're cutting the, the 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 path for all of us and we just get the follow so it's cool thanks man no, it's it's my pleasure. I love hearing that too. I've I've always been a big advocate for for teaching people how to do that, you know, and setting them on. I call it a journey. You know, we're all on our own journey, and we may not always uh, agree as we travel our our respective paths. But man, it it's such an awesome feeling to hear stories like that. So th thank you guys for for saying that all around. Thank you. Totally yeah, sincere. You. Absolutely, man. Well, before you go, obviously, please let us know where we can find everything you're up to, the podcast, um, and your website, everything. Give it to us, Brandon. I appreciate that. Yeah, the, the easiest way is theblackvault.com. Uh, that gives you the social media roadmap. I'm pretty active on Twitter and Facebook, mostly when it comes to social media. YouTube, uh, I have two channels, one which is the original content called The Black Vault Originals, and then the other is more of the archive, the government videos and stuff like that. Uh, always wish there were more hours in the day, but, uh, but I do post when I can. So yeah, I appreciate the opportunity coming on and chatting with you guys and hopefully, uh, we'll all get to hang out again soon. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you for coming. Um, have a great afternoon, my man. And I thank know you. this is only the beginning of the journey. So have a thank great you. afternoon. Thanks. Talk you guys to you too. Have fun. Thank you, Later, my man.
Ah, buttering up John's buns. Another well, I, thing I, we I, didn't think we would have. In you this know what's funny, man, is in my brain, I was like, <laughs> damn it, I wish I was in Vegas right now because I would put the over under. Where would you guys put the over under at eight minutes before 11 if John was going to finish at 11? And he always goes over. Even though he says, I got to leave at 11. He's, 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 there's no way. There's, there's no way. You're going to be here for at least five more minutes over the time. Yeah. Yeah, just, no, I mean, like it, I was thinking that through the whole thing. It's like, I, I got, I'm going to be doing Artemis Prime uh, in 50 minutes. Three, and okay. I, I came into this knowing if you get the four of us together and start talking, I it just, it flew. We didn't get to half the stuff I wanted. I know. To talk. I, I can stay a little longer if you guys want to do it. But cool. I, I, I was just like, I know how every show I've done, I've had, I've interviewed Ryan for our network. I, yep. I've been on with John before. And of course, all the stuff on UCR, you always think it's like, okay, I got this schedule. We're going to talk about A, B, and C, and this is going to be great. People are going to like it. And three minutes into it, it's like, holy shit, did I tell you what happened this one time? <laughs> you know, and everybody's got stuff and it's always so enjoyable, you know, and it, you just get lost and the time just evaporates it flies man and yeah i mean i don't want to take up all your time before the next show jazz so we'll move on to sort of the last thing i wanted to talk to you about um you let me know when you gotta go brother you gotta warm up before the next show take a little break whatever you need let me know now what i really I need to do is on. get rid of the water and soda and get a martini before the next show it's I'm time to talk to some witches <laughs> that is so, the dirtiest you know. water and soda i've ever seen <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> No, it's just, it's Coke. The ice melted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I was like, wait, what's going on? I'm thinking, I'm just thinking it's that like upstate water. New York water, man. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I that's know. Like, Jess. That's the best water. He He's yeah. right. He's right. Yeah. You don't want New York water, really. <laughs> what, what was it, Ryan? Go ahead. See, here we go again. I know. Having fun together. And it's like, that's what I, I do. I feel the audience going. Get on to the UFO. Get on with it. Monty Python. You know? Get on with it. We're going to talk about our future in space event at the Nath Nash National National Nathanol. Cathedral, November 10th. Um, I'm just going to run through the summary really quick, guys. Um, space is the new frontier of humanity. Please excuse the siren in the background. NASA is planning a new generation of exploration. Scientists are debating the possibility of E life. Um, what does the space rush mean at a moment when private citizens are launching spaceships? And uh, the National Director of Intelligence has released a report assessing UAP, which we're all familiar with now. Um, as we look toward the heavens, what does the possibility of life out there mean for our religious life? Um, crazy. I know on UCR, you guys did like a three hour review of this thing right after it ended, which was awesome. Um, so yeah, let's get your perspectives maybe a week or so out from this thing. Uh, speakers were Avril Haynes, uh, Avi Loeb, Bill Nelson, and even freaking Jeff Bezos showed up at this thing. Um, so <laughs> my God, I, again, the world is just bizarro right now when it comes to this topic i can't believe we're having these conversations but is, is this a new show or a movie when you're watching that's all i'm thinking go ahead Luis. yeah <laughs> dude yeah I what mean, do you think of this whole thing yeah give uh, it to us man and i'm gonna play I, a clip too but yeah give us your initial. i thought i thought it was awesome i thought it was fun to watch it was a really cool setting uh in a in a church um it was i love the organ at the beginning of it you know it almost felt like a star wars award like a <laughs> medal ceremony um the original event is supposed to have avi Loeb and i believe uh bill nelson and then it sort of ballooned into avril haynes and jeff bezos uh and the theologian that we saw at the end i'm forgetting his name right now um you know it wasn't it it wasn't a a discussion just strictly on uap mm -hmm. but it was about space sprinkled with uap uh, and and it seemed like that question came up to every guest on the panel, which was really cool. Um, I mean, Jeff Bezos poo pooed it a little bit, and um, you know, but the, the, I think the most fascinating part was I, watching Avi Loeb um, placate to the millionaires that are sitting in the room. <laughs> You're like, hey, you know, we need <laughs> he knew what he was we need doing. more funding. We need more funding. We need more people <laughs> who are interested in this. Uh, you know, we need a hundred million dollars to really look at this. And he's right. He needs that hundred million dollar range to sort of really tackle this. I am curious. We're going to have Avi on the show Friday. 
I'm curious to know how, because the first time we spoke with him, it was, he didn't want government help. He didn't want anything to do with the government because he right. doesn't want his data to be classified or restricted right. in any way. He wants it to be open and, and available to everyone as soon as it's available. So I'm curious to know how does the Galileo project and this bill, a government amendment, how they're going to coexist. That's really what I'm curious about and how that connection was made. I'm assuming it's a Christopher Mellon, Lou Elizondo thing. Um, but, you know, well, I guess we'll get some a little bit clearer answers of that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, dude, it's uh, anytime you can get r religious uh, leaders, um, a director of national intelligence, a Harvard scientist, <laughs> and, and, um, and just great thinkers overall in a place where they can talk about this and nobody sounded crazy. Mm -hmm. Nobody sound, nobody got made fun of. There was no post like, Oh, look at these, you know, tinfoil hat right. people. Like it was, it's a conversation that is now starting to be picked up by Politico. It started to be picked up. Uh, I just saw the New York magazine just put out an article. Oh yeah. About yep. What's happening with this Gillibrand amendment. It's intelligence or two. Yeah, it's coming. It's here. Um, and yeah, I, that's and what I was going to say, Luis. Soak it it's up. It's not coming. We're we're in the middle yeah. of it right now. We're in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah. Well, um, Jess, before we get your thoughts, brother, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to play the small clip that was really? kind of the highlight sure. that the mainstream picked up on with, um, again, Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence. So, um, bear with me while I get this set up here, and um, then we'll just comment on this, and then Jazz, you go get ready, my man. So, uh, DNI Haynes, on this topic of, of life out there, you issued an extraordinary preliminary assessment in June on unidentified aerial phenomena, is the new term of art. To summarize that report, you studied 144 reports from U.S. government sources. 80 had multiple sensors that had made the identifications. In 18 of these instances, uh, observers, I'm quoting, reported unusual UAP flight characteristics. You sorted these into five different bins. The last call, just other. I want to ask you to share with the audience your takeaway after the completion of, of that report and what your own view is as you look at the evidence. Yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line is that we don't understand everything that we're seeing, and that's probably not surprising to anybody in many respects. But it is it was a report that really Congress asked us to produce a report that assessed what we saw as the threat, essentially, from unidentified aerial phenomena, and uh, what our sort of best understanding was of the different reports that we had identified. And it stretched over from, I think, 2004 through to 2021, the different reports that you identified, that you indicated 144 of them. And we had different categories, as you said. So one of them was airborne clutter, another was natural, uh, you know, phenomenon. Uh, another was um, foreign adversaries. A fourth one was uh, related to sort of US government or industry developmental programs. And then the fifth one was other. And that basically indicated that we were pretty sure we weren't going to be able to characterize every single one of these reports in the various categories that we'd identified because, frankly, we were not able to understand everything about it. And a large portion of that is based on the fact that we don't have a consistent way of reporting this information. We need to integrate, frankly, a lot of data that we get. We need to get better at collecting information that's useful to us from different sensors that are available to us. And we have to deepen our analysis in these areas. And that's something that, you know, frankly, probably also doesn't surprise you in the sense that that's how we typically approach our intelligence work. And the main issues that Congress and others have been concerned about are basically safety of flight concerns and counterintelligence issues. But of course, there's always the question of, is there something else that we simply do not understand that might come extraterrestrial, extraterrestrially? Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me get rid of this. That was great. Damn. Extraterrestrially. Um, while it may not be we're, a real we're word. We're it here. It's official. Now it's, it's official. a word. It's because Avril Haines said it, so it, it's a word now. 
I mean, what do you guys think? According to her title, she's honorable, so she it's got to be a word, right? For anybody who 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 cares, um, I I know because I I get poisoned because I deal with so many people in political Twitter as compared to UFO Twitter all the time. Anybody who thinks that Avril Haines is, you know, if, if you think, oh, well, she works for this administration and not that one, and maybe I shouldn't trust her, she's not a political person. She's never been. She came out of the same stable as Lou Elizondo. She came up through the intelligence ranks. And if you think, wow, women don't do that, well, then you can kiss my ass. But she's been doing this forever, you know, and she knows how the system works. And I thought it was very brave of her to go out there and speak about it in that very frank fashion. And I I won't even go into the details. I will just say I'm impressed. She's bold enough because the government is often fearful of saying we don't know. Because they don't want the populace to be panicked. It's like, you don't know? You're the ones running everything. Right. And, you know, right. she's she's bold enough to come out and say, yeah, we're trying to find answers for you because this is important. But no, the fact is, we don't know yet. And we, we're looking at possibilities. We're using the best tools and methods we have. We need to improve those. But I, I really, I, I love what she did. And I... I, I can't say anything better about it. I mean, it was uh, it was it was a short but very great showing. I thought. Jess, do you think? Um, and a lot of people in the chat are saying she deflected completely. She danced around the question. Blah blah blah. I mean, no. yeah. I mean, she, she. There's not much she can say because they don't know yet. Um, that's again. Yeah, what, they, what do you want her to say? Oh, it's change? aliens. Right. You know. Well, she right. doesn't have an alien to show us. Or the other, I mean, if you're conspiratorial minded, and I, I've had moments like that myself, if you think they have those things, but they've decided it's national security and they can't show us, well, she can't just show up on TV and talk about something that hasn't been declassified. That's what John was talking about. She has limits on her too, but she was at least willing to say, you know, there's stuff that we see. We need to know about this. This is important. And at least as far as she's able to tell us, it's like, we don't know what it is, but we're open to possibilities and we're going to put new tools in place and we're going to do better. And I, I don't know how much more you want out of her, really. Yeah. Well, well let's, I, uh, I appreciate yeah, sorry, I, I was going to say, I just appreciate how the question was framed really well. Like, and mm -hmm. it was right, you know, like out of 144 cases, this is what was, you know, uh, classified as really weird. These with multiple instruments, like they laid out the the report perfectly and what it was trying to do in these within these 144 cases. So I'm happy to see that. And I don't know if you want to call this part of mainstream media, but that a media outlet like this, even though it's a church event, um, but it's a church event in the most political city in the country, Washington, D.C., and um, it's it's a it's a church with some, I want to say power, but it's got some significance within the political system uh, because it attracts political uh, uh, people like an Avril Haines. Um, so I, I, I think it's refreshing to that they got the information right and that she answered it um, and I think the only way she could have, because again, anything past that, she gets in trouble. She might lose her job, her security clearance, her pension. Like those things matter to people. I, I hate to break it to everybody. And, uh, and like Jazz said, even if you think it's conspiratorial, you know, there, I, I know a lot of people probably don't like to hear this, but I think there are very good reasons why they don't just spill the beans on all of this stuff. And I think those reasons are very simple as they don't have answers to the questions people are going to really be asking and they don't want to appear foolish. They also don't want to lose funding, <laughs> you know, so you, they want to keep this military apparatus alive and well, because it protects our skies. It protects our oceans. It, it's a, a beacon in other parts of the world that uh, are, are rife with disaster and war. Um, and to threaten that just to answer. Yeah, we got the bodies. We got, we got the alien craft. I, I just, it's you're not putting yourself in the shoes of somebody who works in that um, in that world. Mm -hmm. And I don't and I even with that said, I think it's very difficult to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who works in that world because you've never been in that world for the right. most part. I know the I other, the other part of that forum, by the way, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. 
it was at the church, you know, it was at the cathedral. Right. And one of the questions that we haven't really touched on, they were asking, you know, like, what if this is a reality? What if there's something else? And what does that say to our religious beliefs collectively across the planet with the many religions we have? Uh, before we get done, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just very briefly share. I had this conversation once with a friend and colleague of mine that I work with at Salem, Ed Morrissey, who is himself a deacon. And I, I asked him that question. I said, what would it mean to the world's really? Because we always hear the thing like the government doesn't want to tell us because there'd be a mass panic if there were aliens. Right. And one aspect of that, although there are many, is that the religious people would be just totally freaked out. And, and I asked him, I was like, what would it mean if there was a second Genesis? What if we had proof mm -hmm. that life evolved elsewhere? Because at least the Christian religion and many religions all have this very earth centric you know, thing. And he said, you know, I, I don't claim to have all the answers, but I was at a forum with a priest at one point where that question came up and he said something that really stuck with me. And he said, I, and he's a Catholic, by the way. Um, and the priest told him, he goes, if we need to think about it in that fashion, I would just say to people that when God gave us the message, when the Bible was written, when Jesus came down, God told us what we needed to know to get by. Mm -hmm. If there's mm -hmm. new information that shows up later, then God will make that apparent. And his whole take was finding a second Genesis doesn't make the first Genesis irrelevant. Mm. You know, so th that was the mess. Um, that's not my message. Ed shared mm. that with me. And I that's wanted to heavy, share that man. with everybody yeah. because, you know, maybe that's how the church would adapt to it. It's just like, God gave us what we needed to get started. Now we've blossomed out into this whole new thing. Maybe there's new information and it will be made apparent to us. I'm not trying to preach. I'm not saying I'm the most religious. No, I, in the world I think that sort anything. of underlines the yeah, sediments yeah. that the theologian at the end of the discussion with Avi Loeb was Dave, saying. Uh, like, David Wilkinson. David Wilkinson. Uh, he was basically said the exact same thing. You know, like mm -hmm. the proof of alien life doesn't ex just null and void religion. religion yeah it if anything yeah. it strengthens it. it it proves the existence of god and how great god is uh and and that he is a creator it, it, it that's what god does he he or she it it creates things and so you think it just began and stopped with earth if if genesis is correct and all of this was made in a week <laughs> you know then that means all right my job's done here let me go to another little blue dot and see what i can do over there like, yeah, like how, how many weeks did god have before he did us and how many weeks afterwards right right you know right how, so. how much vacation time did he take well exactly. no the, well and Getting this is again here. <laughs> right, I know. We we we'll move on from the religion aspect, but not before talking about Pasolka. I mean, this is what she was trying to convey in her book, Cosmic um, American Cosmic, is this idea of religion moving into another uh, landscape of what these UFOs, what these aliens might mean, and is this a new form of religion? And could the major religions around the world embrace this topic and infuse it into their? Um, into their beliefs. I mean, if you look at a lot of the major religions, they all kind of have the same core messages. And how would this topic uh, eventually be embraced or rejected from that has always been a big interest of mine. I've told this story on the show a few times, but I asked my Catholic priest during a confession, mind you, um, is it okay for me to believe in aliens and to, uh, you know, to pursue this topic? Because from other more... Um, uh, I guess dogmatic of those in my Catholic church told me what I was doing was a sin and I shouldn't be looking at this. God created man in his image. That's it. Um, but I was relieved when my priest told me, yeah, man, like it just gives God more power and um, opens up his, you know, what he was able to create. So I think that's a lot of what we were kind of hearing in this cathedral event, which I thought was very fascinating that it took place in a cathedral. And, um, yeah, Jazz, I agree. I think, um, yeah, we're moving into a new uh, form of religion. And I think the churches realize that. They've probably seen numbers dwindling throughout the decades. And uh, maybe this is something that could bring people back to the church, whatever they know or don't know. Again, we have to wonder, what does the Vatican know about all this? They did a ET event. 
um, almost a year ago and tackled some of these issues as well. So I know I'm kind of meandering with what no, I'm saying, I, but I think I, there's I a think lot to this. It's funny that this topic is bringing more people to religion and more people to politics. Hmm, that's, that's a big a, part. And that's a good thing. Because the more people that so? interact with, yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> the reason why our government is a mess is because we don't interact with it. Good point. We don't. And people interact don't with it. know about it and how it works. I can't tell mm -hmm. you how many people, some very publicly and others privately, out on social media, Luis and I were both dealing with, just in the past two days, trying to get. Luis is still continuing the big phone home 2.5, you know, and we tried to get information out, call your senators. The number of people who came back and had no idea how to do that or mm -hmm. who the people were, but they were like, yeah, we want to do that. We, we'll, we'll go ahead and help. Sure. And getting feedback, like I, I tried calling and I was hooked up with Dunkin' Donuts or something, you know, <laughs> and it's like, because they don't even know who represents them. So, yeah, I think this is attracting a lot more people and they're going to get more educated about how their government works and whether you care about ufos or not i think that's a good thing right. because we live in a country all three of us that has a very participatory government and the more you know about it the better armed you are to to be able to go out and interact with the government make your voice heard find other people you know and have debates and see how the sausage is made all that stuff and yeah i think this is you can remove ufos entirely this is still a net positive experience in my opinion Agreed. i love that yeah and someone asked in the chat actually um if my priest had told me it was a sin would i have left the church um and not pursued ufos and i can't really honestly answer that because i i don't know what i would have done i was a lot more um religious back then than i am now i'm spiritual i can admit that but uh in terms of being a practicing Catholic, I can say, um, I, I think I would still be doing exactly what I'm doing today and I would find a way to embrace it in my life, um, with my religion. So yeah, that's to answer that question personally, but, um, be, I guess kind of wrapping up this event guys, what other highlights did you have? We had Bezos saying, I would know if aliens were out there. Musk has mm. said the same thing. And that always cracks me up that they think just cause they're into, that sort of stuff that they would know the answers. Jazz, I know you got to. Is, is you, anybody going to be offended? Because I got I got to. I got to ring Not that bell. Not at all, brother. I got no. two things I got to do before the next show. Oh, so, here, my no. Man. Any last word you want to give us before you go? Um, that uh, would be just, great. But please have a good. Thank afternoon. you. Thank you very much for having me. I will confess. I've never said this before. I've never been invited to be on somewhere in the skies. I was actually a little bit nervous when you ask oh because Ryan has become such a superstar and I'm on like eight radio shows a week around the country and a bunch of shows. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to do somewhere in the skies. I was actually a little bit nervous. So thank you for having me really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, guys support everything you see here. They're going to tell you how to do it. But if I could say anything else tied into the last thing we just talked about, if you're watching this, you're interested in this topic, get active. Sure, support shows, support uh, journalists that do this work, but get active yourself. Luis had a tweet earlier today, and it basically, I'm going to paraphrase, said you can either sit on the sideline drinking your juice box or you can get out there and do something. And there yeah. are things you can do, and every one of you individually can do something that will help end government secrecy, end UAP secrecy, and increase government transparency. So, you know, pick up the torch. Guys and gals, you can do this. So that's yes, what I got. Thank to you, man. I'm honored that you came on. Um, we will have you on many more times in the future. I guarantee that, brother. I, I honor, I value, and treasure everything you have to say on this topic. So um, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do this today, man. My pleasure. And, um, have fun over on primetime, all right? Yep. And Luis, I'll, I'm sure I'll see you sometime next week. So Yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 All right, brother. To the Dolphin King, we bid you adieu. Have a great afternoon. Later, Jazz. Yep. And then there were two, as always. The man Those who's two. always willing to stick around with me, man. Um, I We won't go much longer. You've got a an afternoon, and I got to go to work soon, to be completely honest. Pay them bills. Um, if you want to help me pay the bills, Super Chat is still open. I'm not as good as 
at those plugs, man, as you are. But um, yeah, dude, yeah, man. Look, man, you you you're a waiter, Ryan. You know, <laughs> to an like, extent, I'm a bartender. Well, I, my I do point try is, to make is that, that if you put a beer or a drink that you just made on the on the counter for a, a customer. You're you expect a tip, <laughs> and right? you expect a tip, and, and it's not and it's not uncustomary for you to say, "Hey, you know, all of this content that I just provided you for free." Of course, if you can't support financially, like, share, subscribe. But if you can, man, join the Patreon. But I just bought a sweater and a T-shirt from you while during this. Oh show. my god! Thank yeah, you. So, so I, That's you know, funny. like, and I've been meaning to buy this shirt for a, a while, but now, now I got it. Um, and well, yeah, man, like it's. There's no shame in asking for for money for the work you do, and you shouldn't be ashamed getting it. Like it's well, thanks, this is America, man. It's a capitalistic world, and that's how things work. You know, you got bills to pay. Uh, I've yeah. got bills to pay, um, and uh, and you know the dream. And, and if people want to see more of this stuff, the more they support, the more opportunity it allows you to do this stuff it's it's very simple math you know um it is you know, we are street performers right or subway performers right yep you know absolutely like brother. if if i'm it, like i said this a couple days ago like if you're walking down the street or if you're in a subway and you hear the street performer and you stop and you listen to the whole performance to a point where they whip out the bucket or they whip out the hat and they and they ask for patronage if I sat there and watched the show, I'm going to patronize. I'm I'm going I'm going to give my money for the the show I just got basically for free, and it was fun. Obviously, I stopped right and I listened. It's the same thing here. We're street performers. We yeah. are street performers in the simplest terms. So you know, don't be ashamed of that stuff. <laughs> really, <laughs> no, I appreciate told that. A lot of my we friends won't. like get get rid of that of that mindset. It does you nothing. It does you right. nothing, and you're not going to lose anybody by staying at the top and at the end of your show. Hey, there are ways to support. Here's how you can do it. Please consider. There's there's no shame in that, dude. And uh, and anybody who makes you feel any different, kick it, get them go kick rocks. Like they're just they're they're yeah, useless in your life, yeah. and they don't. And and the reason why they they want to shame you is because they don't know how to do it themselves. Yep. Period. Yep, that's as simple you know, as not, that. Psychology. You're not selling shit. You know, you know, you're not selling a documentary about Antarctica and never having stepped foot in Antarctica. Okay, like you're right. not selling information put behind a paywall that is top secret information that only you could get if you pay through the paywall. Like you're not doing any of these nefarious, shady things. You're doing it the right way. You're 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 creating content in a in a new world where content creation has also met with with your audience supporting you you know like this is this is a pay to play world now and you don't have to pay but of course we appreciate when you do it 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 helps us be here for you and if you want Absolutely. more of us show us <laughs> There's no shame in that. No shame None. in that. And look, and you got, you know, Michael and Christian, yes. thank you guys. That awesome. again, I don't want to I don't want to talk about this too much. We're here for No, it's reasons, you don't have they, to make you. it your your whole show, but make it part of it because you've yeah. earned it. You you it helps. put in the work and there's no shame in it, dude. Uh, and you shouldn't feel bad about people giving you money. They want to. They're, no one is putting a gun to anybody's head. This is not forced uh, patronage. <laughs> this is right. this is voluntarily. And 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 thank you guys for showing Ryan that it's okay to do this. Um, thank you. You know, like it, it's, it's hard for it's, me. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Get, get rid of that. But, um, get rid of that, Sean. Like it's it's well, you, it's useless. It's useless. I know, man. It's you know you don't have to say it fourteen hundred times a show. I don't say it fourteen hundred times a show. That's not what it's about. Our show's not about making money, but it's definitely part of it. You know, like it, it's okay, and it's okay to say that. Like I'm trying to make a living. I'm trying. If I'm putting exactly. sixty hours in a week to give you free stuff, I'm gonna ask for some 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 greenbacks, yeah. baby. Well, you and know? it's the same with you know John over at the Black Vault. Like we do these things right. because we love it, um, and we do spend 40, 50 hours a week uh, researching it. I just released an episode about Russia, Russian UFO cases, and Which people I gotta have it. you and, on the show and talk about. Yes, we will. Um, but you know that took me a month to research <laughs> to uh, 
to make. I do yeah. everything myself from the recording to the editing to everything. And um, I have other researchers who help me, um, but I pay them because they do deserve to be paid for the time and effort and research they put into things as do content creators. So I'll leave it at that. Lisa, thank you so much for, for the super chat on um, Patreon up folks. I do have a Patreon as well, guys, patreon.com slash somewhere skies where i did release a bonus episode about a russian ufo case where a ufo dragged a train in soviet russia for over an hour so please go check that out on the patreon yeah it's it's a good this. one man i can't wait to um, talk about the russian uh, ufo files with you it's amazing but let's let's return um Luis, before we go brother um yeah. to this event what was the highlight for you? I know Avi Loeb said a lot of really cool stuff, but mm -hmm. what did you take from the cathedral event? Did you think it helped further the conversation? Absolutely. Um, yeah, Absolutely. what was the highlight for I, you? I, the highlight is that it's it's a cathedral event that happens all the time where, where, where high-level officials, whether they be government, whether they be um, social, you know, um, um, outspoken activists, things like that, come to a cathedral and have a very level-headed, calm conversation, almost like mass. Mass is calming to a point. And it was done in the most powerful town in the country, Washington, D.C. So it's adding a, a level of uh, legitimacy to this discussion. And that's what I took away. I wouldn't say one. I mean, Avril Haines was probably my favorite part. I was hoping, I think if we had Bill Nelson actually sitting there mm -hmm. at the live event, we would have gotten a couple more nuggets, but because it was pre-recorded, maybe he, he was just a little less, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of, um, open, I guess, or vulnerable or, or vulnerable, off, but off like cuff, more, maybe. more, um, what's the word? Uh, uh gosh where you, you a little more guts you know i think in front of gotcha, like gotcha. you you understand the difference between doing a rehearsal versus doing the actual play and oh when yeah. you do the actual play there's more adrenaline there's people in the stand you want to get the applause Live audience, you know like absolutely and and so i think i think if bill nelson was actually there there would have been you know, because he would have been able to interact with Avril. They would have maybe right. had a back and forth on on sort of what NASA is seeing versus what the DNI is seeing. So that would have been really cool. But again, it's it's like the New Yorker. It's like uh, the Washington Post. It's like the New York Times. This is in that vein. It's it's bringing this conversation to a city that holds very powerful lawmakers, and it's giving them permission in a intellectual higher um, level sort of discussion where, where they're used to hanging around, you know, like, um, you know, the, the DNI inspector probably doesn't listen to unidentified celebrity review or somewhere in the skies, <laughs> but I could bet your ass. She probably reads the New Yorker. She yeah. probably reads the New York Times and the Washington Post, and she probably pays attention to conversations that have to do with the intelligence uh, apparatus when they happen at this cathedral. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my biggest takeaway is that it's normalizing the conversation. And that is a good thing. That's a good thing. So that's that's sort of my biggest takeaway from the event. I couldn't agree more. Again, when I first heard about it, I'm like, oh, it's kind of weird, but okay. Like, what what else could be gonna hurt. any weirder in 2021? Yeah, yeah so <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's A lot of weirder shit me. has happened in 2021 than this. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, speaking of weird, my man, before I let you go here, yeah. what do you have coming up on the Unidentified Celebrity Review? Tell us a little more about what you'll be talking about yeah. with Avi Loeb on uh friday yeah. tomorrow um Peter Robbins, i mean uh so well today we, we're going to be talking to frank milburn on the singular singularity lab which will be oh, cool awesome. um and then yeah Avi's coming in on friday i mean i i, I really want to just I, I first i booked peter robbins and then this avi loeb uh uh announcement happened with the galileo project and lou elizondo and christopher mellon and i asked michael i'm like we got to get Avi. And so Avi's only available date was Friday. So I was like, Hey, Peter, <laughs> how would you also like to help us interview? Excuse me, Avi Loeb. And he was of course down. Yeah. 
Of course. Um, and so, you know, I think, you know, exploring the, the relationship between Galileo and now this amendment is going to be fun to talk about, but also bringing Peter's, uh, I don't want to say woo, because Peter's very level headed, but, but Peter's way of thinking with Avi's way of thinking and see mm -hmm. what happens when those two they're very those, different they're different but they're very intellectual the both of them um and uh I and I think it's gonna be a really really cool conversation so I mean you know that's I wouldn't say specifically you know what exactly we're going to talk about because we don't know until it happens but those are the things I'd like to sort of focus on and see where the conversation goes um, and you know, past that, I, I, I can't, I don't have my, uh, so I do have my schedule in front of me, but I'm still booking up December. So, you know, it's, it's holiday. So it's a little more difficult to get guests. I, I'm trying to get you on the show, but you keep dodging me, Sprague. I'm kidding. Uh, um, I to do that on air. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but you know, yeah, man, we're just, I think the next month is going to be all about this amendment yep. and what gets signed into law versus what's on in writing right now and you know like jazz said i mean look if jazz is confident jazz and he's very <laughs> pragmatic about these things you know if he's confident and excited about the verbiage and that it's not going to change and it's probably going to get signed into law as is you know i think i think that's going to be very exciting that says a lot. 2022 is going to be it, June June 24th, 2022 is going because that's when this ASRO office is supposed to be 180 days after the bill signed into law. So it's going to be the same date that we got the report on. And and we're going to have a brand new office, not a task you, force, not some twenty two million dollar crappily funded exactly. thing, an actual budget with an actual office permanent office um but but that once that office is established we have to give time to that office to then start working <laughs> you know we got to give them <laughs> no i want it now yeah i know they want it now but so which means and, and this is sort of what i've been saying is that 2023 is going to be really fun mm. a really fun year because the power of that office will have been felt in the community and whatever information is then disseminated to that office will get into a classified report and then eventually get trickled down into a public report. And and I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to get some really fun things to talk about, maybe some videos, maybe some pictures. I, I, I think 2023 is shaping up to be the year that this conversation officially goes in the fifth or sixth gear, whichever gear we're in by then. But I mean, when the ASRO office is created, I believe around that time, also a book by one Lou Elizondo will also be coming out. So mm -hmm. 2022 is going to be fun, but 2023 is going to be the fruits of the labor of everything that's been set into motion. 2023 is going to be the year we actually get this. I think see some results and then that'll continue into 2024 and hopefully beyond. And, and, and then I'm hoping that this ASRO office is established enough, is doing enough good work where not only the American people, but really the people in the Senate Armed Services Committee and the, uh, um, uh, uh, the Committee on Intelligence, that they continue to make sure that this is in every year's NDAA and that every year the budget goes up or or hopefully not down or stays the same you know and that this office does in fact stay permanent yeah. so and influence the rest of the world we have to think about the impact our uap report mm -hmm. had on other countries this gillibrand even if amendment, rival countries this gillibrand amendment had already uh, a, a a big influence on a senator in australia from tasmania there you you go. know, uh, you, we've got the, the, all the boys at U, UAP Media UK have written their templates for their House of Parliament and yep. people are sending it in. This morning, I just got a picture from somebody in France who had a stack of letters this thick to his French representatives asking them wow. about this topic. So it's working. <laughs> it's working. Um, I, I, I mean, just the other day, uh, Ryan Robbins, UFO Jesus, 
you uh, yeah last night put out a video on how to get in contact with your representatives with a phone number and, and a template of what to say so it's fun to see that people are sort of taking the formula they see the value in it and then making it their own which is exactly what we wanted to happen is again you know you could either sit on the sideline and drink your little juice box or you can get in the fucking game and help us change some stuff and it's not very difficult it's literally two phone calls yeah <laughs> two phone calls and you could go to the big phone home website if you don't know how to find your local state rep you can find them there i would start with your senators the two senators in your state and then if you want to go to your congressman go for it but the, but let them know that you want this this amendment to pass as written it, it, be part of the game get in the game this is look in the mirror time again it, and it's not hard man like this is so easy and and trust me when i tell you you're gonna feel really good when you hang up that phone you're gonna feel like oh my god i accomplished something i'm gonna go celebrate i'm gonna have a beer i'm gonna smoke a joint i'm gonna go hang out with my buddies i'm gonna watch a movie i'm gonna play some video games whatever it is that you do to celebrate you're gonna feel good as soon as you're done making that phone call so you yeah. know, I encourage everybody to pick up the phone and do that because it's 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 coming with or without your help. It's going to happen. But we'd rather have your help because the more and we you, have, the better it is. You have been a big part of that. And I I will say this publicly. I do think that what you have accomplished with UCR and the big phone home in general had a lot to do with what we're seeing now. Um, you know how how much has yet to be seen but i mean yeah. i can tell you man you activated me to reach out to Gillibrand, one of my representatives and look at what happened i'm not saying you know by any right. stretch of the imagination she read my email or anything mm -hmm. like that but i reached out to my local reps too and got some responses and like you said like the minute they responded and said thank you for bringing this issue to my attention i don't know how much help i can be but this is interesting like that got my adrenaline going they actually took the time to respond and to um, take the topic seriously. You know, they yeah. easily could have just put that email in the trash, but they responded because they thought, huh, I, I didn't even know this was happening at higher levels. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I'm going to pay attention. So no, you guys over there have I done mean, a lot, man. You've done a lot. And you I, should be very I want to give, I want to give credit to Christopher Mellon and Lou Elizondo. Um, mm -hmm. I think that especially Christopher, I mean, just look at the, the, the verbiage of this amendment. This has got Christopher Mellon's name written all over. I mean, this it is does. a Chris, this should be called the Mellon amendment. Um, but he's <laughs> not a congressman, so he's not gonna, and I'm sure he doesn't even want the accolades for it. But you know, I think uh those are the guys that have really been and and that 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 document that John Greenwald showed us today where this is going back to 2018 where they're going to Congress and they're giving private briefings to these senators and congressmen um, behind the scenes. And those are the things that really got the ball rolling into this amendment. But I could tell you, Senator Gillibrand get and I know I tweeted at her and we retweeted during the big phone home to at her at least three to four hundred times. Somebody yeah. saw that. Somebody saw Somebody that. did. Um, I and just got a voicemail you. yesterday and from my yous. congressman. Yeah. Really? And, and thank you. Yeah. I got a voicemail yesterday from my congressman that today there's going to be a town hall that they want me to come and ask my question that I wrote him about. Holy uh, shit, during the dude. Big phone home. So I'm going to be doing that today. So it's it's working. It's working. it's working. You know, we, 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 I see all the time people getting responses and, and, you know, yeah, you could write it. Oh, it's just a boilerplate response. Maybe, but they had to do it. They actually had to physically give you that response, send it to you um, and, and read what you wrote them. So it's, it's working, but I'm not here to take any credit whatsoever this belongs to me just as much as it belongs to all of you because all of you i can't i can't one phone call to my state and local reps is not going to move the ball on this a couple hundred might a few thousand will a few million will absolutely get what we want and that's what we're trying to do we still got a long way to go this is just the first step you guys like this is not a touchdown it's not a home run. This is like, you know, 
a double play, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the, you, you just hit a double into center and, and, and you're rounding first and, but you got to stop at second because there's still more work to be done. And, and, and there's still people to lean on. There's still people that can activate themselves. There's still people that can, can really help move this discussion in the way we all want to see it moved. But if you're going to sit on the sideline and drink your juice box, it's not going to happen as quickly as maybe you want. So so stop drinking the juice box and let's go. Let's get in it. Love it, man. Yeah, once you're on third base, guys, steal home plate. And that's <laughs> what's going to happen. Exactly. I love it, my man. Well, hey, before we go, good luck at the Thank town you. hall. And please let us know where we can find everything you're up to. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you could check us out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Unidentified Celebrity Review. Uh, four o'clock Pacific standard, one o'clock on Fridays on KGRA. We go live. Uh, we start at 1 PM Pacific. And then on Thursdays, we're on the singularity lab with Michael Mataluni. And, uh, uh, and that's it, uh, every Thursday at four. So we've got a show five days a week for you guys. Uh, you can check out, um, just Google the unidentified celebrity review. I know that's a long name, uh, but once you Google it, you find it and you subscribe, you know, it's pretty easy from there. Love it. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your time today for My reflecting on all dude. this. Again, I haven't, pleasure. I haven't done current events in a while, so I couldn't think of better people to come on. So, uh, that's all I got, my man. Thank you so much for joining me and we will do it again soon. All right. Anytime Ryan Sprague, any time. And I'm coming on, I'm coming on your show. I know you are. I'm not sweating it, dude. <laughs> all right. I love you, buddy. Right, brother. Yep. Peace. All right, love care. you too. Peace. Bye. And then there was one. Guys, I couldn't have imagined this going better, despite a few technical snafus on my part. Um, thank you to John Green Greenwald for hopping in and joining us to bring us some of his latest breaking news. Thank you to all of you in the chat who contributed today, um, both financially and just with your amazing comments. We had a wonderful discussion. It felt so good to talk about what's going on in the world today of UFOs. Um, but I, I will be returning to historical UFOs over on the podcast soon. I've got an awesome episode coming out with UFO cases you probably haven't heard of before. Some of you might, if you're really old school. Um, but other than that, I want to thank everyone for the super chats, for listening, for watching today. Um, the show is every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts or right here on YouTube where you're watching. And um, we got a lot of good stuff coming up, guys. Um, a lot of new projects in the works over at Somewhere in the Skies uh, that I can't quite talk about yet. But they are really, I think, going to, uh, to make some waves in the UFO world and beyond. So I'm excited to hopefully share news of that soon with our fellow friends over at the debrief so check out the debrief.org where you can find all the latest in tech space defense uap and everything in between but other than that that's all i got guys so as usual i will leave you with our mantra here and that is to keep your feet on the ground but never stop searching somewhere in the skies have a wonderful morning afternoon evening keep looking up and i will talk to all of you soon thank you for coming and have a great great afternoon. Keep looking up.